voting precinct that I used to vote at, we had an electronic machine for everything, you know, that I had at least recently voted for. And here they had a, uh, a paper ballot. And also, you know, not to criticize too heftily of these, I mean, not these people at all, because it's really not necessarily their fault, but what they consider to be a private vote is kind of a joke. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a little table, you know, it's kind of over away from their table, which is good, I guess. And But it's, uh, you know, it's just a little table with three little pieces of that corrugated plastic, you know, board, uh, you know, poster board type material stood up, you know, and, and then there's another one on the other side with two other pieces of it sticking up, you know, to make a little bitty private window. And then you carry your ballot over to the machine and scan it through. So the first, first vote I'd like to remind you all today that was registered at this voting precinct, Thompson Hood Veterans Center. I can't re really remember the designation number of it. The first vote cast there today was cast by freedomradio.org for congressman at the moment, Ron Paul, soon to be president. And don't forget it. Uh, everybody uh, that, that's, that's watching this now and everybody that's going to watch it later on today, I hope you follow my example. <laughs> um, you know, not because of any other reason than that is what you feel is right. Don't forget that even though we want to take down Obama, if, if, if the media is right and Ron Paul's completely out of this and that he doesn't stand a chance, then what's it going to hurt to give him a vote? It's not going to hurt. If that, is, that what, is that what your conscience tells you to do is vote for Ron Paul? but you think that you need to unite behind Romney so you can beat Obama, then, then what do you got to lose? Vote for Ron Paul today because he's the right one to vote for. Not because you really want to beat Obama, you really want our team to win. You need to remember things like follow the money trail. And if you follow the money trail, you'll, you'll follow it to a place that starts to become really shady and, and there's a really big gray area between Republican and Democrat, because Goldman Sachs, if Romney is the nominee here, Goldman Sachs is going to determine our next election for President of the United States. And that's all I got to say. If you want to know why that is, you go look it up. Uh, we will have more information on that later on. Today we're focusing on the primary and some you know, wrapping up some other loose ends. Uh, you know, in other news, I've been doing a little bit of research on, on the financial crisis lately uh, in Greece and Spain, Portugal, Italy. Uh, the euro is in serious trouble right now. They're talking about bailing it out. Of course, um, you know, if you, if you believe in this sort of idea, you might think that what it might get replaced with is some form of, of a world currency and of course you know if we look at the example of the euro of this banded together uh, currency and you know now that its demise is coming to fruition you know of course uh, that should teach us to run scared from any kind of collective currency like that um, you know we need to listen to, to Dr. Paul uh, we need to learn about the Fed we need to learn how to to get rid of them and then we need to learn uh, about an actual uh, commodity based economy and, and, and currency so keep these things in mind if you haven't somehow haven't heard anything about all of this information at this point you know take a little bit of time today it's 6 a.m. 6 20 you've got uh, you've got almost 12 hours to do a little bit of research and learn if you're a registered Republican in the state of Kentucky, you can vote today in the Republican primary. If you need to uh, to find out your voting precinct, uh, there's a there's a Kentucky website that'll tell you where you know where you need to go. If you didn't get a registration card or whatever, uh, not a registration card, but a voter information card or whatever the heck they call it, in the mail, <clears throat> then you can get online and check and see uh, where you're supposed to vote. And you should do that. You should go vote today. 
Uh, you know, even if you don't vote for the guy that I'm asking you to vote for, you know, go vote. I mean, I, I understand people's dilemmas of feeling like their vote doesn't matter because, you know, the reason I requested a paper ballot. If, if you want to look into these voting machines and, and what what they're doing to our, our republic, and, uh, you'll find a lot of information on that, you know, and how they're owned by Diebold. All of them, you know, half of them are owned by Diebold and how these things can be easily tampered with and how all of our votes are counted by a uh, company that operates in Florida but is based out of Spain. So basically all of our votes are being counted by a foreign government. And they determine <coughs> the outcome of our elections. And we need to be concerned with any possibility of infiltration into our voting system and the corruption of such because all that I ask is for fairness, you know, and, and this is a republic, and if the vote is the vote, and uh, and it doesn't come out on my side, then I'm perfectly willing to accept that, but I'm not willing to accept the uh, corruption and the cheating and the lying, the lying the way to the top that has become so commonplace among our politicians. We need more leaders like uh, Senator Rand Paul. We need more leaders like Ron Paul. We need more Leaders like uh, Justin, uh, and, and I've still, if the pronunciation of his last name is starting to elude me. Justin Amash is how Rand, Rand Paul says it. Uh, we need to <clears throat> support him. We need to rally behind Thomas Massey today. We need to call our senators <clears throat> and our congressmen now to tell them that we support HCON Resolution 107. If I'm not mistaken, you know, all these numbers blur together from time to time. HCON Resolution, House Concurrent Resolution 107. <laughs> this resolution is the bill that was, well, a concurrent resolution, it's not a bill, uh, that was introduced, uh, well, to the House. It's gone to committee. Uh, some of the particulars are kind of fuzzy right at the minute. Uh, it was in committee and it's coming back out of committee uh, looking good and gaining steam from what I understand. This bill is targeted at President Obama and reasserting the, uh, the power of Congress and Congress alone to declare war upon a country that has not directly attacked us or does not pose an imminent threat to our domestic safety or tranquility and uh, what I tell people you know we, we remember that that Congress and the Senate is, is completely corrupt themselves just as corrupt as the president for the most part although we do have uh, we do have good people in there such as Senator Paul from Kentucky from here in Kentucky I like to remind people of that um, we do have those people but uh, for the most part, they're totally interested in serving their own interests. Uh, but they also have the desire for the power that, that Barack Obama is abusing at the moment. And they're mad at him because he's taken all the power and they want some of it back. Well, you know, that may not be a very uh, legitimate reason. That not, that's not an idea we want to enforce. But the idea that we do want to enforce is impeach Obama any way we can. And certainly, uh, the idea that, that Panetta recently indicated that the UN treaties and NATO are, are grounds for declaring war on a country and then we'll let Congress know, you know, how we're going to deal with it and see if, you know, maybe we might let you in the loop if, you know, if we feel like it that day. But otherwise, we'll just issue another executive order, we'll declare war, we don't need your approval, we don't need anything. So far, Barack Obama has attacked the other two branches of our federal government relentlessly. He has claimed that the Supreme Court possibly striking down Obamacare as unconstitutional is an unprecedented act, and I quote that. He said it's an unprecedented act. Well, you know, Ms. Mr. Barack Obama, Mr. Constitutional Law Professor Joe, uh, 
that's what the function of the supreme court is and if you don't know that then you must have really wasted a lot of money at harvard law buddy you really must have um because i certainly didn't go there and i certainly do know that uh, also he you know this panetta thing and you know has completely he's, he's spat in the face of congress and said well you don't have any power anymore you know we don't have to worry about what you got going on or what your ideas are whether you give us a declaration of war and we, we haven't worried about that since what before the korean war we haven't had a formal declaration of war you know bill clinton did it uh kosovo uh george bush did it numerous times um Obama's done it in, in Libya and now pushing for Syria. Um, you know, it, the list just goes on and on. But but Congress has finally had enough of it. They, they feel like they're losing their power, you know, that they want to be abused. And they want, they want this power back so they can abuse it, you know. But it is a little bit harder, you know, to get 500 and some people to, you know, to, to say, to agree on something. You know that's bad, or you know, than it is to to get one totalitarian uh, attempted dictator to you know to just enforce his will upon the people with executive orders and forcing us into wars that we don't need to be fighting in. Uh, but you know, of course, it doesn't offer us that much more hope because the uh, Congress, you know, just recently. Reinforced its, you know, the, the position that it would uh, declare military action against Iran if if nuclear capabilities are being pursued. Which, you know, of course, we know that this has been a big back and forth. You know, through the whole Republican primary, of course, um, all of the Republican candidates except for Ron Paul are interested in attacking Iran. Uh, you need to think about your vote for Romney and, and the fact that he is just as likely to declare war on Iran as is Barack Obama, if not more so. Um, you know, we need to get out of these wars. We need to get our troops home. We need to join people like Adam Kokesh that are attempting to, you know, to spread the, the idea and the feeling of the military right now who has donated more money to Ron Paul than any other presidential candidate um, and more than all of the Rep other Republican nominees combined, uh, his donations from, from the military. And of course, we also have to remember, you know, while Romney is funded by, you know, his, his own money, and his own corporations and everything else. Um, he gets a lot of money from Goldman Sachs, and we know about Goldman Sachs, don't we? We know a lot about them. We know how bad they are. Uh, well, he, they donate a lot of money to Obama, too. I, I don't want you to forget that. Now, I'm not, right now, I'm not trying to tell you who to vote for, but uh, I'm not trying to tell you who to vote for, but. Uh, follow the money trail um, you know for for any, you know anybody in, in this world knows that really greed can be the most evil thing that we have to face especially in our society today these bankers these politicians are we are feeding you know at the at the public trough constantly meanwhile the uh, the average citizen gets thinner and thinner uh, they get fat off of our uh, hard work and determination, and we've got to we got to put a stop to this. Um, anyway, uh, this has been a primary coverage of the Kentucky Republican primary today. First vote cast at our precinct in, at Thompson Hood Veterans Center was for Ron Paul, and uh, you know. If something crazy goes on and he ends up with no votes from that precinct, then we'll know that, uh, well, something's going on. Anyway, uh, you all have a good day. Vote Ron Paul in the primary today if you're from Kentucky or Arkansas. And uh, let's, give him a, let's give him a good reinforcement here.
in what has been a tumultuous week and a half now, uh, following some of the campaign confusion and announcements and the media lies and the and the attacks from the establishment. Uh, let's let's join together and let's vote Ron Paul today. So thanks to everybody tuning in and. Uh, We'll see you next time on freedomradio.org. Uh, remember to like our Facebook page, check out our YouTube channel, our website at uh, www.freedomradio.org. Also, uh, we're now, of course, if you're watching right now, you know this, streaming on live on Ustream. Uh, if you go to the Facebook page or, or any of one of our pages, it should have links to everything else. Uh, if you just follow them around, and if you have any input, you want to talk to us, you want to uh, help us get some things done or if you have a project you want our help on uh, you know we're all about networking just you know uh, contact us through the various channels and uh, and we'll start working on things we got to keep this liber liberty movement alive no matter what happens today and and in the future uh, we can never relent because uh, as we know when you know we've gotten